Now let's look at the ingredients of a slipping incident for a pedestrian. Uh, there are five different factors that go into it. One is the person involved. Uh, second is the activity that the person's involved in. Third, the environment where the accident took place. Then the working surface or the walking surface. And finally, the footwear. So there are, these five uh, ingredients are important. The uh, person might be using prescription or non-prescription drugs or alcohol or illegal drugs. There are millions of illegal drug users in the U.S. There are adverse interactions between drugs. A lot of people are using a do dozen medications or even more. And when you get up to that high number of medications, there's really nobody on earth who knows what the interactions of those drugs might be. Uh, there are health factors like, for instance, osteoporosis. Women over 50 often suffer from this, and especially white and oriental women seem to start out with weaker bones, and they're most prone to serious injuries from slip and fall accidents. Uh, with osteoporosis, when you, you fall, your bones may shatter, and when they shatter, you need surgery. From surgery, there may be complications like infections, and all too often the accident victim is dead within a year. Diabetes can cause people to lose feeling in their feet, and uh, they're not as aware of slipping. Seizures and drop attacks, stroke, arthritis, and other things can affect uh, people's propensity to slip, and there are a lot of people around who have these problems. We can't ignore them. Now, the activity that the person's engaging in. Traction requirements uh, depend on the activity. When you're rushing, uh, especially when you're making a sharp turn, you need more traction than when you're strolling. And if you're pushing something, that's a special case because you don't have as much weight on your feet to help improve your traction. So uh, uh, what happens is if you're pushing a wheelchair or a gurney, for instance, that has a 200-pound person on it, you need a whole lot more tra traction force than you need when you're just strolling through the mall. Okay, now footwear. Uh, leather solings and hard plastic heels are often slippery on many dry surfaces. Although uh, most slip and fall accidents happen on wet or other lubr otherwise lubricated surfaces. Soft soling material, as we know, can good give good traction, uh, especially when it has a well-designed tread. But it has, can be treacherous when tread has worn off. Now here's an example of a shoe that has a well-designed tread. This is especially designed for people who walk, uh, work in slippery environments. This is the other end of the spectrum. This is a shoe that didn't have a very good tread to begin with, and uh, a lot of the tread was worn off. This shoe caused a near-fatal accident in a restaurant parking lot. The man who was wearing it fell in a light rain and uh, a car nearly backed over him while he was down on, on the ground and couldn't be seen. So shoes are very important in helping uh, prevent accidents. But the price of the shoe is no indicator of safety. Uh, a very expensive shoe might be dangerous and a cheap shoe might be safe. Uh, it depends on its design rather than its price. Now, the environment in which a slip and fall accident takes place can have uh, contaminants or lubricants uh, like rainwater, snow and mud, beverages, grease and furniture polish. How does furniture polish get on the floor? Well, it could be overspray from when somebody was polishing the furniture. Uh, debris, the proverbial banana peel, can be on the floor. And uh, distractions and lighting are uh, another environmental factor. Glare can, uh, can affect uh, whether a person sees what's uh, on the floor. Or if there's poor lighting, there's not enough light, somebody might miss uh, a patch of some lubricant on the floor. Thanks for watching.